Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use the Zellcore wallet from Fluxcoin. I'll be running through the whole process and showing you all the features in the wallet. The Zellcore wallet is a non-custodial wallet, which means you own all the coins stored and you have your own private keys. It's made by Fluxcoin team to store a large array of cryptocurrencies and facilitate access to the usage of Web3 applications. There are loads of features to cover, so let's start off by downloading Zellcore wallet from their website, which is zellcore.io. As you can see here, we have a download button for Windows, Mac, and you can also get it on your phone. Then just double click the download button, which corresponds to your operating system and run through the install process on your computer. This should take around five minutes to download. Once you've done this, you can open up your app and it should take you to the sign in page. Now you'll want to create an account. And to do this, you have to click register account on this device. It's below the sign in page here. From here, you can create a username and password. Now you can choose to back up your account with security questions. If you just click this button here and then click next, it'll ask you to answer three security questions. It's probably best if you complete this as it allows for you to recover your account if ever lost. Now, once you've answered them questions, you can go to log on and using the username you chose earlier, then just click log on and you should be taken to the wallet homepage. So this is the wallet homepage. It's also called the portfolio and you have your balance right here on the right side. The different coins stored in your wallet is on the left side by here. Lastly, the separate wallets you can move from crypto if you want. These are already preset separate wallets for payments, mining, income, investments, retirements, and scholarship. These allow you to spread your crypto and keep track of what's what in your wallet. I personally don't use them, but I can see how it would be useful to split them up. So normally you'd have preset coins imported already, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Flux. However, you can add more to the wallet if you just click manage assets, then click add assets. You can also have the choice to import your wallet from any coins listed. Then it brings up a list of all coins that you can hold on Zellcore. They have over 450 different coins that you can hold in this wallet and they are added more constantly. So if you just click on any coin, it will add it to the wallet list as you can see here. And then you can actually click on receive and send. Now, if you wanna change the currency that you're seeing your wallet in, you can do that easily if you click on the setting buttons here down below. It will give you an option for fiat currency displays and also displays in your balance in Bitcoin or Ethereum. So if you want to change any of these separate accounts like mining, income or whatever, you can actually click on the overview button. Then these buttons on the side will allow you to edit your wallet name and color display. Now, if you want to see your wallet address for any coin, all you have to do is click on the coin and then you can click on receive and it will generate a wallet address for that coin, which is only allocated to you. So you own it. The same goes for sending crypto. You just click on the send tab and you can input a sending address. So that's it for all the features of the portfolio. Now let's get into the exchange tab on the side here. So if you hover on the side, it should bring out a display. Just click exchange and it should take you to the exchange tab. Here you can actually connect your exchange accounts to the ones listed here. Some of them are locked, but you can unlock them if you buy the Zellcore Plus feature, which is a subscription which gives you access to all features on the Zellcore wallet. All you have to do is find your exchange below, then enter your API keys and it will connect your account. However, if you don't want to connect your account, you can still use the Binance or Serum decentralized exchanges at the top here. If we click on the Binance exchange, we can see that you can use this like any other decentralized exchange. All you have to do is input the coin that you want to buy and select the other coin that you want to sell. Now, if we exit out of here, this one feature which I use all the time, and this is the quick swap feature by Zellcore at the top here. You can swap basically any coin the wallet holds for any other coin. It's a straight swap. For example, if we input some Bitcoin here, we'll see it gives us an amount in Ethereum. We can change this to any coin we want. As you can see here, I'll just change it to a different coin and it should give us a figure that we can actually swap into all these different coins that you can hold on the wallet. Then you can change the rate by here. So you, so you can have best or you can have fixed floating. I found it's easier to leave it at best swap, but sometimes having a fixed floating can pay off a little bit more just so you can get more coins out of what you're trading. Then click swap and sign the TOS disclaimer and it will swap your coins for you. This is great just for swapping coins without having to go through exchanges for swaps. This is one of the great features about Zellcore because they try to have everything you need in one wallet so you don't have to go around to different wallets and exchanges for your coin management. Next, I wanna go over all the apps offered in Zellcore. Again, if you hover over the side, it will show tabs and the app tab is here. As you can see, Zellcore offers multiple apps and I'm going to go through all of them now, just giving a quick brief overview. 
So first is the Zellcore Plus app. It gives you access to all the features of Zellcore. As you can see here, it costs $4 per month. All the features you get are listed on the left side here, so you can access exchanges and various other things that they list here. The next app is the Purchase Crypto app. This is where you can purchase any crypto that the wallet can hold. All you have to do is select your country and then your state if you live in the USA. Normally for countries, it's just gonna give you a country. Next, you input the amount you wanna buy, let's say $100. That's gonna give us a figure in Bitcoin, but we can change the coin we are buying by clicking this button. Then below, you select the address you wanna send the coins to and agree to the TOS here. Now all you have to do is click next and input your address and card information. I'm not gonna show you that, but it's pretty simple to buy crypto through this app. The next app below purchases crypto app is the coin request app. When you click this, it will actually open up a coin request website. It's basically a website where you can request a certain amount of cryptocurrency and it allows for you to send to a recipient, kind of like an invoice if you wanna be paid in crypto. First, you need to create an account and input your wallet address. Then you input the coin you want, then add your recipient's wallet address below. Make sure that this is correct and remember it's case sensitive. Then the amount you want to be paid and the message you want to write to the recipient. This website was made to make it easier to request cryptocurrency from people for payments. And it allows them not to make mistakes as they can just click next and they can basically send their crypto out instantly. Now, when we head back to Zellcore, we can see that there is two apps that are grayed out. This is part of the Zellcore Plus features, so we can't access them right now. But the portfolio tracker helps you import more data on your coins and keep track of other investments. The Fero Node app allows you to view your Fero nodes through Zellcore. Now, the next app we can use is the Zell ID app. This is where you can view your overall wallet address and you can find your private keys here. I'm not gonna click it because then it would show my private keys. It also allows you to set up two-factor authentication here and just asks you to create a pin of four numbers so that you can easily log into your Zelle Core ID with two factors. Lastly, you can also use the Zelle ID to connect your Flux nodes and get paid into this wallet. What you do is you set up a Flux node on Flux OS, which is online, and then you connect it through your Zelle ID. Now the next app I'm showing you is probably one of the most used app by miners and node runners because it controls all the parallel assets of the Flux ecosystem. This is called Fusion Swap. When you open it, you can see we have a swapping page. If we click on the sell button, we can see it lists all the parallel assets and the native Flux token that you can swap between. So you can swap any of these assets for any other ones. It does carry a fee on each transaction, but typically the lowest fees are on coins with the lowest fees. For example, Flux Ethereum parallel asset carries a higher fee because the Ethereum network has very high gas fees. So you can trade native Flux for any parallel asset, but you can also trade these parallel assets between each other. Now, if you click the three dots in the corner, you can actually claim parallel assets from mining or Flux nodes, or you can claim a snapshot. Snapshots are from the parallel asset airdrops, which they have three left right now. The way it works is that you hold Flux in your wallet, and you can claim a percentage of that in parallel assets when they are released. You just click the snapshot claim, then select the snapshot that you wanna claim, input your Flux address where you hold your Flux coin so they can locate how much you have, and then select the address in which you want the claim to go into. Then it'll show you the amount that you can claim and it will be deposited once you've claimed it. The last app is the Flux Nodes app. This is for the node runners and once you've connected your account to your node, you can view the stats in the dashboard. It also shows the current running nodes around the world. So that's pretty much it for all the features covered and how to use the wallet in a basic sense. Now, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.